Thank you for listening to Namat's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. Prepare to witness the horrific rise of the next generation of evil. You become... Based on the short story. By Stephen King. Comes the nightmare. Like you've never seen it before. I know. It sucks. So hard sometimes you can hardly breathe. But I can help with your pain. Brace yourself. He who walks, he talked to me. He took care of me. So now I'm going to take care of him. Like killing all the adults. For starters. Children of the Corn. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 507. Releasing March 3 in theatres across the US is Children of the Corn, a chilling supernatural horror story in which a psychopathic 12-year-old girl in small-town Nebraska leads a deadly cabal of children in a murderous uprising against the corrupted adults. A reimagining of the chilling Stephen King short story, Children of the Corner blends supernatural thrills with themes of fanaticism and generational divide in an increasingly divided world. And joining me now is the director and writer of Children of the Corn, Mr. Kurt Wimmer. Kurt, I thank you so very much for your time today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. Likewise. And it's I gotta say, first off, it's so great to see you back behind a director's chair. I know it's I know you've been busy screenwriting and such, but it's great to see you back as a as a filmmaker as well behind a chair. And uh, no less in my hometown in New South Wales as well, that you shot our uh, children of the corn uh, a That's couple right. of years back. Um I'm just really curious when it came to this movie, I mean, everyone knows the law of Children of the Corn in regards to its film franchise, but this is about going back to the roots, going back to that Stephen King short story from 1978, and then taking your own spin from it. Not necessarily adapting it, but finding inspiration from it. What was it about that short story, though, that really spoke to you as a filmmaker that you said, you know, this is something that I think can, that today's generation um, can really come um, have a need to listen and look at because I think there's a lot of themes in the film that's really kind of relevant to, relevant to today's um, world. Well, thank you very much. Um, first of all, uh, what originally attracted me was the wrong, I was completely wrong about it. I said, hmm, children and corn, how hard could it be? Hmm. Well, I found out, let me tell you. Um, and uh, we added COVID on top of that. So it's the three C's. So it was yes. wonderful. But that turned out to be, I was, you know, as usual, I was just kidding myself. But, you know, you're 100% right. I looked at it and obviously they've made a lot of remakes. I haven't watched any of them. I might watch the second one. I can't really remember. Um, but uh, I looked at the, I, I read the short story and I was like, you know, the, 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 the short story focuses on the adults. And it's really the kids that are more interesting to me because, you know, they're, they are the, um, the gunpowder or the fuse that lights this keg. But, you know, I looked at it and I, I said, this is, you know, and I mean this in the best possible way. This is not a story. This is a template. This is a, an eternal and universal template 
you know, just like Oedipus Rex or something like that is, you know, stories that will be told over and over again they're, because they, they're applicable, as you point out, from generation to generation. And the reason that you can tell them again is if you retell them in the context of the new generation. I mean, there's no reason why 17 year olds today should have to go back to 1982 to watch Children of the Corn. And also, I don't think they'll quite get it because mm. back then in that original, it was about there were some kids who were religious freaks. And I don't think that is really relevant anymore or, or, or frankly, interesting anymore as it might have been back then. But I looked at it and I thought, you know, gosh, this this is all uh, just highly symbolic. It's highly metaphorical because corn, if anything, symbolizes the earth. You know, only wheat perhaps symbolizes the earth better than corn. And children are, if I look at them, they're the embodiment of the future. And so uh, when I look at it like that and I say, well, it's very plain then why children would revolt and kill their parents. Because, you know, I look around today, obviously, there's a lot of people making decisions, policy decisions for a future that they're not going to be in. But children who are going to be in that future don't have a say in it. And I think that's kind of upsetting. And I think younger people are getting more and more aware of the fact that they're sort of, they've been <clears throat> rendered politically if, if, effete and in making decisions that are going to affect them. They're not upset. So I, I can see how this template lays very well, I thought, over um, what's going on today. And and if I were a kid, I would, I would um, probably kill my parents too. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Tee Public. Tee Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, Tee Public is sure to have something you will love. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Amazon, the world's leading online store. Amazon is your first stop to buy a wide range of products at competitive prices with fast delivery times. Amazon is also a world-class entertainment hub that includes Prime Video, Audible, Twitch, Amazon Music, and more. Sign up with Amazon today and experience the best in online shopping and entertainment. Please support Matt's movie reviews on Patreon. Get access to exclusive content, request movie reviews and top 10 lists, and help support my work. Please click on the Patreon link in the description below. You know, what's really interesting about this film is one of the themes I really picked up on, and I think it's something that uh, was probably in the original story as well, um, is the theme of fanaticism. Um, I mean, fanaticism comes in different forms. You spoke before about the kind of religious um, um, aspect of the of the original film. In this film, there's a fanaticism still there too. I don't want to give away too much in regards to what context it is. But what I found really interesting is that how sometimes fanaticism can come from really broken down places and broken down people. And when you first meet the people of this small town in Nebraska, it's a town that's broken by tragedy and financial hardship. And from that kind of sprung this kind of like fanaticism. Is that something that you really wanted to delve into as well? That notion of how a broken society, a broken people can really, um, from that, to the seeds from that can really grow so like a, a monster of some sort? Yeah, we could see Kashmir Tiger by the tail. It's it's um, a snowball that's rolling downhill and just getting bigger and bigger. I mean, uh, but I have to say also, um, this was not accidental. This was a tragedy. It is the causing uh, of the adults. Hmm. They're the ones that made the decision to put the GMOs in the soil and the roundup in the soil uh, in order to... Um, you know, leverage the the money monetary value of their crops, and in doing so, they actually destroyed their crops, and they destroyed this legacy of corn that these these simple towns have had for generations. And so, they're the adults are frankly responsible for it. Now, of course, you know they're they're suffering for uh, what they did, and uh, you know as a, a consequence of, of it, they're you know cheating on their spouses, and they're fighting with each other, and they're infighting, et cetera, et cetera, and. You know who suffers from that the most? Well, it's it's the kids who just have to sit and witness it, and the kids who you know they played in those cornfields. That was their playground, but it's all just dying around them. So, um, so yeah, you know, I, I and it's a question of fanaticism. I, I'm not sure that's quite the word because I, I, I think that the kids have a great point. Person, mm. I, I think that you know somebody's got to do something about it. I never. I was always on their side. 
Um, they were the heroes of the of the story to me, not not the villains. And um, and you know, there's a question, an underlying question, and whether they're they're fanatic fanat, fanatics or it's a cabal, or and it is a question I don't know the answer to, or is it all just a hallucination? Mm. It's called this fungus that's grow, growing on the corn, uh, like ergot, erga, you know, and um, or the the he who walks behind the rose is just a manifestation of you know their trauma. So, or is it uh, an allergic reaction by the earth, GMOs, and put in the soil, you know, or or or? So, you know, is it is it fanaticism or is it sort of righteous anger? It's a really good uh, debate to have. I think when watching, it. I think it really comes down to a lot of times the ambiguity of that comes down to the person watching it. Um, you know, I wanted to talk about the notion of the cornfield. You spoke before about this kind of like it's symbolic meaning, but what about the the visual kind of uh, look and, and, and feel of it when it comes to you as a filmmaker? I mean, the cornfield has been used in so many different ways in movies. I mean, all the way from Shoeless Joe Jackson appearing in Field of Dreams from a cornfield to like what's happening in Children of the Corn. And there's something about the cornfield that to me almost, almost, almost kind of seems like the darkest parts of the ocean. Um, I've never been in one, so I went on YouTube and I found a video where someone actually walks through a cornfield with a, with a, a, a point of view shot. And, and just doing that, the rustling of the leaves and the, the thickness, and you don't know what's coming from where, you don't know what's behind, you don't know what's in front. The unpredictable, unpredictable nature of what could be in there is so, so fascinating to me. Is that unpredict, unpredictable nature of the cornfield? where you don't know what's in there, you don't know what's going on, you don't know where what's coming from, from any type of angle. Is that something that really kind of spoke to you as a filmmaker, as that this is a kind of a perfect setting to really put some really cool kind of horror thriller aspects in the movie? Well, I think that's, I, I, I mean, I, I can't take credit for that at all. That's Stephen King. I mean, he was, you know, that's part of the genius, if not the primary genius of the original story is, is the title, Children of the Corn, because corn is, there's no, there's no fun, sunny, happy version of corn. When you get in a cornfield, it's just creepy because mm. you're lost. There's no sense of direction whatsoever. Um, you know, they'll they'll grow really tall trees outside of corn fields. Like they'll find grow the tallest tree they can tree they can grow, so that when people get lost in cornfield, they just that's the one thing they can see that can guide them out of it. But it is like a Nietzschean abyss, a cornfield. So you know, it's like signs and all of these movies. There's there's no um, there's no cornfield in the world that's not creepy. And also, and and, and King knew that, um, or, he, or he instinctively knew it. And also, children are kind of creepy, too, in some respect. And when you put them together, they're like force multipliers that operate to, to, to um, <clears throat> amplify each other. So when you have children of the corn, it becomes very creepy. And so that's why I think that title has always been so enduring because people automatically understand it without having to know anything about what went before or went in the movie. When you say children the core and you have a pretty good idea what you're going to get. Um, final question here. I wanted to talk about just your experience of filming the movie here in New South Wales. It was so unfortunate the timing in regards to how the pandemic broke when it happened here. And uh, interestingly, your production here at Children of Corn was the first really in the world to like safely shoot a feature film like uh, and, and do it to completion. Um, you had a really great safety manager here in John Heaney. You helped out in regards to a lot of that. There was um, help from the government as well. When it came to that type of pressure, like f making a film is pressure on its own, but then when you put a pandemic on top of it, I can't even imagine what, it, what that was like. The overall experience of doing that for you as a filmmaker, is it something that, I mean, what 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 do you take from that going forward now? I mean, do you think that the industry as a whole has had a better kind of grasp going forward if something like that will happen again? I mean, what was your experience with that? And what do you think it says um, it says to you as a filmmaker that not only were you able to complete the film um, going forward, but now here we are a couple of years later and people are going to watch it as well? Uh, well, listen, every movie's hard. Every movie's hard in different ways, that's for sure. So I... Uh, you know, weird. The pandemic didn't bother me. It was when it the way it bothered me. We started shooting about in the first week of April in 2020. Yes. So uh, once we started, you know, we were just making a film again. That's it. But it was the weeks leading up to that. You know, when um, uh, Scott Morrison was closing everything down, the world was closing everything down, and we 
we were we didn't know whether we were going to actually go to pull the trigger and shoot, despite of all the, all the work of pre-production we had put into it. So that was the scary part. But once we got the cameras rolling, I was like, you know, it's just it's another movie. It's um, they're, and they're all tough. You know, when you're shooting in the corn with ki- kids, it's it's always going to be tough, and on a limited schedule. Well, for everyone out there listening. Children of the Corn, March 3, in theatres across the US. I recommend everyone check out this film. Um, it's been a couple of years since it's, it's shot. It's finally out. And I, I really did enjoy uh, the film, uh, Kurt. I very much enjoyed it. Um, and i got to say that it's great, to, again, to see you uh, behind the camera. I hope um, we get to see that more in the future because I love your eye. I love the way that you approach things. I love the things in the movie and how you kind of reshaped the whole kind of franchise here. And congratulations to you. Best of luck to the film's release, and hopefully we get to talk again in the future. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Matt. Likewise. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.